All right, I didn't think you guys were gonna make it back. I've been waiting. So let's put this uh, motor together. I got a few things ready yesterday. And today we're just gonna assemble everything and uh, it should go smooth. We'll see. So we have the uh, crank and the stand here. We already have the rods torqued on there. We have our gear on there. We have our silver line bearings installed. And uh, have everything laid out, everything's cleaned. We have our cam clearanced for the stroker crank. The cam bearings have been notched and clearanced. Uh, we have our lifters installed, I notched the lifters. We have our uh, new cam gear bolted on our cam over here. And uh, I think we're ready to get going. So uh, I think I have everything laid out. But you know how it is when you do a video. We'll find out in a minute. So let's go ahead and uh, get this started. Or you see I put the uh, bearing in the case over here, which I don't normally do. So we're going to pull that back out and save that and make sure our assembly is flat in the uh, crankcase here before we bolt the other half together. minutes off of that put a little motor oil on there motor oil on the cam bearings back all right Got cam plug ready over here Go. Nice. It's awful quiet. It's quiet in here today. Not a lot going on. All right. So the next is going to be our uh, crankshaft. We have all our dowel pins in place. We'll make sure you have those in there. Those are in place. And take the crank out of the stand. Set it right here for a minute. There we go. Get our rear bearing over here. Dial pin always goes towards the flywheel when you're assembling your bearings. You wanna make sure this goes towards the flywheel side of the motor. Not like so, but like so. to the silicone put that back on so that's good when we need it all right one more check 
Cam bearings installed, got lube on them, got our lifters installed. We got a little uh, high pressure grease on those. They've already been broken, in, so they're ready to go. And uh, now we're gonna drop the crank into the motor. And grab the crankshaft, and grab the first rod and the third rod. And you can drop it into the engine. Of course, I'm backwards here. Re-grab it. There we go. Now we're going the right way. So we're just going to gently set this in because we're going to have to rotate our bearings to line up our dial pins now. Okay. Before I uh, put the bearings on the crank, I put a little line. I use a marker, set the bearing in the case. I put a line on each side of the bearing so I know approximately where the bearing needs to go. So when I'm rotating it, I'm not lost in the dark. Right, this one goes right there. I'm gonna lift up on the rod a little when you turn when you uh, rotate the bearing. Pushed up from the bottom. Seems to be easier for me. Okay. Okay. This one moved again. that one there's that one just clicked in you want to take your time with that because if you smash the bearing you got to start all over so we're going to push down on the crank now to rotate it a little bit Make sure it clears everything. One last time. Looking good. Rotate it around where we can put our cam in now. Now at this point, I'm gonna take the other bearing half. And you wanna place it right here on the main. And it should lay flat, shouldn't rock at all. If you have any movement at this point, you need to go back over the dowel pins. We had no movement, so now we're gonna put this bearing in the other case half. All right. So let's put our cam in next. Got some oil on there, we'll put a little more. Dab will do you. Make sure the thrust gets a little oil on it also. Mark the dots, it's much easier. I'm sure some of you guys have seen me struggle with that in the past, but I've learned. All right, now I'm gonna put a little uh, lubrication on the cam gears. You get carried away. We wanna keep our uh, case half clean so our sealer will do what we want it to and not be degraded by the engine oil. Now I'm making sure all my rods clear my camshaft. Everything looks really good there. We'll verify our dots one more time. That looks 
looks good. Cam's on there. Everything looks good. Give these a squeeze. Mm. If you're lucky, they'll stand up nice. This, most, this motor's very nice. So it doesn't have a lot of side clearance on the rods. So they fit the crank perfect. And uh, they should stand there for us. So we're gonna put a little sealer on the other half of the case. This is uh, where you decide what type of sealer you like. I use the gray. Silicone, uh, good luck with it. I'm sure there's much better stuff out there, but this is what's available in my area, so. I can pretty much build a motor with this stuff and be pretty confident that it's not gonna leak, so. You wanna put the uh, silicone towards the outside of the case, not so much towards the inside, so when you tighten the case, it doesn't squeeze into the motor. Just looking to make a seal it doesn't have to be up here so that's what we're doing we're concentrating lower than more to the top if you haven't butched your uh, silicone tube you can use the applicator and just run a nice bead on the other case half that works really well We've lost that on this tube. So anyway, just lube that and we'll put our case halves together. And we'll be off to the races. So I hope everybody's doing good out there. It's a crazy time. Hope we can build a motor. Shop looks great. I'll do a video on that. Clean the uh, shop up. Mm -hmm. Anyway, this is a tricky area right here. Not a lot of oil leakage, but you know, make sure you get it around that dowel pin. The other half of the case is much easier to put it on, so. I'm just going to put a small amount on this half. Thin coat. Really thin. It doesn't need to be thick. to uh, silicone the pickup tube. <sighs> Fat fingers. I don't have good finger control. We're gonna get done. Where's my little what piece of slag might here? Get that off. Continue on. Make sure there's no uh, contaminants, no, a little bit of remnant. I don't like the clear silicone, I will tell you that. It seems to attack the aluminum. So stay away from the Home Depot silicone. I know it's, I see some of my uh, people that I know build motors use it, and uh, it's not a good idea. Especially on transmissions. You get transmissions all the time and they use it on the side cover and it's already starting to deteriorate the aluminum i think it's whatever's in the silicone or that particular type of bathroom silicone that attacks the uh, aluminum and you get white deposits around it so it's speeding up the corrosion process so i like to put a little sealer right here when we're uh sealing the case i put a little bit of sealer right here so it's got a little bit on the o-ring in there that's a personal preference. Some guys don't like this kind, but uh, they don't have to make sure the motor doesn't leak. I, I do, 
So I'm gonna put a little bit right here. Not upon the mains, just in the little bit of a bore. There's a little bevel here. Just try to get a coat on that and it'll coat the O-ring and uh, keep oil from seeping past there and getting out of the uh, paste nuts. Alrighty, I think we're ready. I'm gonna put a little oil on this half, the cam bearings. Put the cap on the silicone, set it aside. Get another rag and uh, put that back up there. All right, we're gonna put some oil on the cam bearings. Everything's in place. I put silicone on the top of the uh, cam plug. Put a little bit on the other case half. Nothing worse than a cam plug leaking. I uh, did a motor with a CT and he got one from CV. And those are pretty slick. They have the uh, sealer built onto them. Rubber. You know some of the uh, AS21 cases that didn't have the groove for the cam plug were rubber and it sort of got the similar coating on it but for a, uh, a normal type case with a groove in it. We used it on uh, the 40 horse. It work really well. I'm going to uh, get a gift certificate from uh, CB Performance to give away for our drawing on this motor when we did the compression ratio thing. So that'll be coming. We'll do a giveaway on that. I didn't forget about you guys. But, uh, you know, it's been crazy lately, so things will catch up with us. All right, we got our lifter clips in. Hopefully the lifters won't fall out. Uh, never a guarantee with those things. One last look, we have our cam in there. We got our lifters all lubed up. We checked our dots. We got our bearings registered. We checked that with our uh, other bearing half before we put it in our case half. We have our other case half in our hands. We have the bearings in there, we lubed them up. We have the cam plug in place. So at this point, we're ready to make the two case halves. Like that. They went together really nice. Okay, we're gonna put a little sealer on the uh, washer. So I used the silicone again. You guys can use whatever you want. A lot of guys use Permatex. On the uh, nuts, I like to use the uh, Permatex on the oil pump, but I use the silicone on these case washers. And I just dab a little bit on the bottom like so, on the flat side. Flat side down, bevel side up. You'll see these washers are uh, beveled on this side. Let me, let me show you guys. They're beveled on this side and they're flat on this side. So this is the side you want to the case. You don't have to get carried away. It's just a small amount of silicone. It's a very small area of thread between the thread and the case, so you're not trying to uh, fill a big void. Got our steering box the other day. I'm gonna show you guys that. We'll do a little video on repairing the car. Right now I just wanna get the uh, motor in one piece. Got all the pieces, everything's ready. So we're gonna go ahead and assemble this. 
Still have to uh, paint all the sheet metal. It's just factory, whatever it comes with. You know, and that's gonna deteriorate quite quick. You know, that, that coating doesn't last very long. So we're gonna use some uh, base clear and make it look really nice and it'll have a little bit of longevity. Of course, you know, if you're in California, you can have it powder coated. It's a little easier said than done here. And uh, I'm sort of restricted to the house right now, so I'm gonna paint it. It'll come out nice. I've done it in the past before powder coating was uh, popular. I used to do that back in the 70s and 80s. I would paint sheet metal. For the high-end motors and um, it held up pretty well I mean I really don't I can't really think of anything that failed really bad so, powder coat they have some trick coatings so it is pretty cool so you know it's what's available but it'll definitely be better than what comes out of the box with those tins 27 foot pounds on the uh, case nuts. You can uh, reference a manual if you prefer. But after you build a lot of motors, you seem to remember this stuff. I mean, I can't spell very well, but I can uh, remember torque settings. I know small block Chevrolet 75 on the uh, inside bolts and 65 on the outside on the mains because I used to build a lot of those so I'm going to set this up to 27 there we go there we go all locked up let's go ahead and tighten these down a little bit with the uh, normal ratchet I like to use a crisscross pattern on this, you know. We should probably make sure that the crank rotates at this time. So. Is all snug down and come out with our torque wrench. Torque them to spec. All right. It's slippery. She still turns. I need a pulley. Pulling up for it. I used to have some on the other engine bench, but uh, I don't know why I don't have any in this room. I'll figure that out. All right, that does it for the uh, main case studs there. My pulley. Pulleys are uh, here's the pulley. Oh yeah, super sweet. 
super sweet. So uh, on the next video, we will uh, install the piston cylinders and the cylinder heads. I'm gonna go ahead and not bore you with the uh, eight millimeter nuts. Uh, we did use new hardware, I uh, like the stainless steel type. It had some regular uh, CAD plated bolts when it came in, so we're gonna upgrade those. And uh, gotta install the uh, sand seal for this pulley. Put the oil pump in, put our CB uh, in and out cover on, and the drive gear into the short block, and it'll be ready to go. For the uh, next video, we'll do the piston cylinders and the cylinder heads. We're gonna put a set of uh, scat push rods on this motor, our push rod tubes, so we'll have to assemble those. And then we're gonna have to do the uh, rocker arm geometry. We'll cut some uh, mant and push rods for this. And uh, we'll do a video on that also. So I have another uh, two liter that I took apart. So that'll be coming, an 82 by 90 and a half motor. A little, more, little, little nicer, a uh, little higher end parts, but we're gonna put that one together and we're gonna, if they let us go to the drag strip, we're gonna go out there and try to race it and uh, try to race some stuff. I wanted to travel around this year, but that's sort of not working out too good. And I did one collab video with uh, CT Moog. Go over his channel, check those out. And uh, I'd like to be working with him, but we're doing the responsible thing and sort of trying to isolate. So when all this passes by, we'll have uh, some better videos and I'm looking forward to doing some more videos with him, helping him on his bus, Rusty. And uh, he needs some floorboards welded in and some sheet metal work done. So looking forward to that. He just did a video on his axle beam. So go check that out. He does really nice work for uh, just getting into the Volkswagen game. He's very meticulous and it's cool to see somebody like that. I mean, there's a lot of guys out there like that in Volkswagens. That's what's cool about Volkswagens. They're, uh, they seem to attract that type of person oriented, detailed. So anyway, uh, that's where we're at on Oscar's uh, 78 by 90 and a half motor. We did buy a set of new piston cylinders for this. So, uh, not piston cylinders, we bought pistons with a stroker piston with the uh, slipper skirt on it. So we'll go over that. I had some of the ideas from uh, a couple of my subscribers. So I called around and uh, they weren't that expensive and went ahead and did that rather than stack a bunch of space under the barrel. It's gonna allow us to get a more suitable compression ratio. And uh, I think some of the detonation issues we had on the last motor were because the cylinder head had two bad exhaust valves on the same head. So it basically had a dead two dead cylinders when it would come to an idle. And uh, it just had so much fuel puddling up that a lot of times when that happens, it just pre-ignites and it can cause de detonation. Uh, it was pretty reasonable on the compression ratio. It was 8.5 to one. And uh, you don't want to take too much power out, you know, uh, and compression is definitely power. You can make power with no compression, but you have to make the motor pretty big to do it. So, uh, yeah. Anyway, hope everybody's doing good. Hope you uh, got something from this video. And uh, go out in your garage and build a motor. Uh, those are the best emails, by the way. People say, hey, man, I watched your video and built a motor. That's really cool. And uh, I don't do a lot of, you know, engine builds for customers on YouTube. But uh, every once in a while. They'll show up at my doorstep. And uh, Oscar has been trying to get me to do this motor for a year, probably a year and a half. And uh, him and Andrea are pretty good friends. She handles a lot of the emails. And uh, they correspond back together or back and forth. And he ended up having the motor built somewhere and he wasn't you know, happy with the results. So it ended up here after all. He just showed up. <laughs> so. I'm glad to build it for him and uh, I'm excited about it. I think it's going to run really well. And uh, yeah, I did get all the uh, pieces for the transmission, so I got to get that out of the car and get that apart. We're going to check that out. It's fairly fresh, but it has some leaks. So we're going to basically reseal it, put some scat mounts on the uh, transmission, and uh, 
just give it an overlook. Probably pop the gearbox out and see if it has a third and fourth gear welded. And uh, yeah, I don't think we're going to be making you know a tremendous amount of power with the K drawings. And uh, you know the single springs, the combination we have is basically you know it's going to run really well and have a lot of torque, but it's not a you're not going to have to abuse it to get the power out of it. So so anyway, till the next one. You guys have a good one, and we'll see you on the next video.